And this is really central, to, I think, to an effect of collaboration. Um, there, is, there is the notion of, uh, of, of fun, of challenge, surprises. Um, this is all the makings of a great collaboration. We don't always agree, but we don't have to. And when we don't agree, sometimes that becomes the genesis of some exciting new directions. You know, this, this whole blacklist thing, oh my gosh, I, th I think that every year when we have to come up with three totally brand new wines that we've never made before, that we'll make only once, I sometimes, I sometimes think, oh my gosh, are we stretching too far? And yet what we see is really, I think, the epitome of what makes you great. You're creative, uh, you, you, are, you rise up to the challenge, and you bring your team together in a way that brings them up to the challenge well, so that every blacklist wine that comes out there, one of a kind and brilliant. Thank you. I think you, you, you nailed it. Um, we always have to talk about the team when uh, we do this kind of, uh, I would say, uh, uh, venture in such a high level. Uh, you know, on our side uh, and on my side, I just want to take a quick moment to say, like, really, I'm working with a team behind me who are really dedicated to uh, the excellence of winemaking of Napa. And that's because we have to look for vineyards. We have to look for not only vineyard, but for the type of soil who might work exactly with the program we want to achieve. Uh, the type of clonal selection, the, the, the spacing in the vineyard. Basically, the vineyard uh, uh, characteristics are, are will be the key of the success, and we know it, and that's required to really have a team to be able to expand our wings and, and see what is out there. And, and how can we, can we find uh, this little niche uh, and this little special uh, vineyard that we are going to look for. It requires a team to do that those days. As, um, as uh, the competition is, as we both know, is very high, as there's a lot of movement in this business, this business in a constant kind of motion. We never want to fall asleep, as we both know. So yeah, to reach the blacklist, it's, uh, I would say for us, it's fun. It allowed us to learn more about one region. It allowed us to, more, to learn more about specific site within the Napa Valley and working with different, obviously, varieties that maybe we not been working uh, in the past, like Petit Sirois, for example, or Cap Franc, or Petit Verdot, or or Zinfandel, maybe one of those days. Uh, we, 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 Tempranillo, we want to really expand really a vision and, and, and see it's always about reaching a product to excite the brain, I think, of the consumer. I always put my brain of, we don't want to make wine for a specific category of people, but we want to make wine, for me, that's my personal approach to a broader audience because we want to have almost like, uh, uh, you know, a connection with, uh, uh, and the connection with the audience and the connection help us to really understand the new direction, what's going to be in 2023, what's going to be in 2024. So, um, so that's why we, we, it's such a fun business to be in. We know it.